Welcome back everyone. Today I wanted to go over every working duplication for version 1.2.0 to build a sort of all-in-one duping guide for current patch, and along the way point out which glitch I think is best for each type of duplication. This video will probably be on the longer side, so let's not waste any time and get right to it. As always, credits for each glitch will be listed down in the description along with links to all contributors. Starting off, we have something that's not actually a glitch, but rather a clever use of game mechanics. Since this isn't a glitch, it doesn't really have a name, but you can use this trick to farm unlimited bomb flowers and elemental fruit. To do this, you're going to need either the Bacoblin Mask or Majora's Mask, at least one homing cart, and optionally one stake. The Bacoblin Mask can be acquired by starting Colton's quest north of Pico Pond and completing the first step at the cave. Majora's Mask can be found in the Floating Coliseum, directly below the Coliseum Ruins in the depths. If you don't have either already, I recommend getting the Bacoblin Mask for this. It's the quicker and easier of the two to get. Homing carts and stakes can both be found in this dispenser, just southeast from the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower. For our location, you want to come right here to the East Akala Plains, just to the right of East Akala Chasm. The closest shrine is right over here. For this demonstration, I'll be showing you where you can farm bomb flowers and fire fruit, but I'll include locations for the other elemental fruit at the end. So once you load in, just head east until you see the dormant Talos. Then find the Bacoblin you want to use, and kill the Talos and all other enemies, making sure to leave our one Bacoblin alive. Once that's done, put on your Bacoblin or Majora's Mask, then make a save, and immediately load it back up. This will reset our new friend's aggro, so he isn't so upset with us anymore. Once you load back in, take out your homing cart and optional stake. If you're using only the cart, you can go ahead and just flip it upside down and lay it back on the ground. If you're using a stake, attach it to the top of the cart. then stick just the tip into the ground, like this. When that's set up, throw an item at the cart to turn it on. Don't swing with a sword, or you'll re-aggro the Bacoblin back on you. When that's set up, throw an item at the cart to turn it on. When the homing cart turns on, our new friend will aggro onto it and start throwing bombs or fruit at it. We can then position ourselves to his side, and when he pulls an item out to throw it, we can just steal it right out of his hand. And you can just sit here and farm as many as you want for as long as you want. Just make sure you wait to grab the item until the name tag for it shows up on the screen over his hand. If you grab it too early, you'll take one from his backpack, and those ones aren't unlimited. This is the most efficient method to farm bomb flowers or elemental fruit. And you can find a Bacoblin with ice fruit right here in the Tabantha Hills, and a Bacoblin with shock fruit right here just northeast of the Spring of Courage. Moving on to the actual glitches, next up is minus duping. This glitch can be used to double the quantity of any throwable item that you have five or less of. To perform this, You'll need a horse, preferably tamed, the item you want to dupe, this item can't have a quantity of more than five, and you'll need one of any other item. You'll also need to be able to view memories from the Puripad. If you don't have access to this, then you need to do Impa's first quest for the Geoglyphs. You can find her right here, standing on a platform in the middle of North Hyrule Plain. Once you finish this first quest, you'll be able to play memories from the Puripad. For location, you'll need any somewhat high ledge that you can jump down onto your horse from. For this video, I'll be doing this in Lookout Landing for the sake of making it easy for anyone to recreate step for step. So the first thing we need to do is perform hold storage, so we'll start by getting our horse into position to jump onto. If you're doing this where I am, you can use my coordinates in the bottom right as a rough guideline to help line up. Once the horse is in place, go ahead and climb or ascend up onto your ledge. Now 
Now hold down R and line up so you're in position to be able to just hold forward and jump onto the horse. But before you jump, we need to go over the most important step. You need to press up on the D-pad and select any item to hold in your hand. The item itself doesn't matter, but we need to specifically have an item in our hand and not our weapon. If you just hold out your weapon, the glitch won't work and you'll still be holding items after the memory step. So with an item in our hand, we're going to jump forward toward the horse, but press plus and bring up the menu just a little bit before actually landing on the horse. And that's gonna look like this. Once in our menu, go ahead and press X to start holding and hold all of the item you want to duplicate until the menu displays zero. If you can't hold, then you pause too late. Now with all the items in hand, we wanna press minus, tab over to the adventure log and go select any memory. You can skip this with X and plus, we just need to load it up. When that's finished, press plus to go back into your inventory and you should see that you're no longer holding any items. If you're still holding items, that means you jumped onto the horse with just your weapon in your hand. From here, you wanna press X again to start holding, then re-hold all of those same items that you wanna duplicate until it shows zero in the inventory again. Then you wanna close the menu and as soon as you land on the horse, hold R and up on the D-pad. Try to do this fast to preserve as much time as you can. With your D-pad menu open, scroll through the items until you find the one that we're holding and you should see that it's displaying as a quantity of zero. Select the item and throw it onto the ground. You'll see that the zero quantity should now go into the negatives. Repeat this for every item you held. So if you held five of your item, you'll need to throw five of them from the horse. If you held two, throw two, and so on. Now, during this process, you'll probably see that the items you were originally holding in your hand have fallen to the ground and are now rolling around. If these get too far from you, it'll mess up the glitch. So try to go somewhat fast. And this is the reason why we immediately held R and up on the D-pad after we landed on the horse. It's just to give you that little bit of extra time to throw. Once you've thrown all of your items on the ground, go ahead and jump off the horse, and you'll see that the items that originally fell and were rolling around have now returned to your hands. Press A to drop them on the ground, then pick all of your items up. If you open your inventory, you'll see that you've doubled the number of items that you started with. Now, because this can only be done with an item that has a max quantity of 10, you can only use this to get up to 21 of one item due to the drop limit. This can technically be bypassed, but we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. While this next glitch isn't technically a duplication, it is kind of a money dupe, so I felt like I should include it, and that glitch is vendor scamming. This glitch can be used to generate infinite rupees incredibly fast. To do this, you'll need almost the same requirements as minus duping, but with a slight variation. You'll need a horse, again, preferably tamed, then you'll need any item to sell. Don't worry, you won't actually be losing these items, so the more valuable, the better. You can also have any quantity of this item, unlike minus duping. So the more you have, the faster this process will go. Then you'll need one of any other item and the ability to watch memories from the Puripad. As for location, you'll need the same kind of ledge setup that you can jump down onto your horse from, but this time you'll want to make sure that the ledge you find has a shop nearby to sell your items. Like with minus duping, I'll be doing this in Lookout Landing so anyone can easily copy me step for step. So the first thing you'll want to do is talk to the vendor and make sure they don't have any special dialogue that you need to clear out first. This includes prompts for side quests, like with Lookout Landing, and scenarios where Beetle will ask you to give him a specific item. These dialogue options will stop the glitch from working, so we need to take care of them first thing. Once you've cleared any of those interactions, go ahead and save, then we're ready to set up. Same as before, we want to get our horse in place, then head up onto our ledge. Once again, we want to hold R, then press up on the D-pad and select any item to hold. Like with minus duping, you must be holding an item in your hand and not just your weapon. Now jump forward toward your horse and press plus to pull up the menu before landing. Now you're going to find the item you want to sell and hold at least one of it. You can hold up to five if you want, but this will work just fine if you only hold one. With whatever quantity you held in your hand, press minus and we're gonna go load up any memory like we did with minus duping. Now anytime we load a memory for a glitch, we can always skip it by pressing X then plus. We just need the memory to load. After that's done, press plus to go back into your inventory and hold the same amount of the same item you held before the memory. So if you held three diamonds before the memory, hold three diamonds again. If you held one sapphire, like I did, 
hold one sapphire again, and so on. With your item or items back in hand, close the menu and you'll see your held items fall to the ground and start rolling around. Once this happens, you want to quickly walk your horse over to the vendor and you'll notice that you can't talk to anybody. To fix this, just hold R and select any item to hold with up on the D-pad. With an item out, you'll be able to talk to NPCs from your horse again. This will not work by just holding your weapon with R. You need to take out an item. Talk to the vendor and go into the sell menu. Select the item we held after the memory and choose sell all. You should see the quantity in the shop menu drop down to the negatives by however many of the item you're holding. If you close out of the shop menu, then reselect sell, you'll see that all the items you just sold have returned to your inventory and can now be sold again. This process can be repeated infinitely and can be used to fully max out your rupees in a matter of literal minutes. When you're done, simply jump off your horse and press B to put the held items away. And everything you had at the beginning will be back in your inventory. If you encounter an issue with the items not resetting after selling them, that means you got too far away from the items that fell when you landed on the horse. Simply reload from the save before the glitch and try again, either closer to the vendor or try moving to the vendor a little faster after landing on the horse. This is the most efficient way to get rupees on any version of the game. Our next glitch is called Zonai Inventory Shift Duplication, or ZISD for short. This glitch allows you to duplicate up to 10 of a Zonai device when you have less than 10 of it already. To do this, you'll need the device you want to dupe, any other device with a quantity of 10 or more, and a third device with a quantity of only one. You'll also need the ability to view memories from the Pura Pad. For location, you'll need any ledge that Link needs to step up onto that's also in a spot where you can be facing directly into a wall. For the video, I'll be continuing my trend of using Lookout Landing, and you can come right over here to this little corner for the perfect place to perform the glitch. Now the first thing we need to do is sort our Zonai devices in a specific way because we need our three devices to be in a certain order in the menu. The single device first, the device with 10 or more second, and the device we're duping last. The easiest way to do this is by throwing the devices with R and picking them up in the same order. So first, we'll throw our single device and pick it back up. Then we'll throw our 10 and pick those up. Again, the stack can be more than 10, but the closer it is to 10, the faster this part will be. Then finally, throw all of the device that you want to duplicate and pick them back up. This should sort them to the bottom of your device list in the order of single device, stack of 10 or more, then duping device from left to right. Once that's done, we're ready to actually start the glitch. First thing we want to do is get up on our ledge and take out the single Zonai device by holding R and selecting it with up on the D-pad. With the device in our hand, we want to walk sideways off the ledge and press plus once we're in the air. From here, we want to go into our devices and select the one with 10 or more and fill the device bar with 10 of them. Now, we're going to press minus and go load up one memory. As always, this can be skipped. Once that's done, press plus to go back into your inventory and you'll see that the device you want to dupe will now have 10 removed from its quantity. So if you had only one, like I did, it should be showing a quantity of negative nine now. When you see this, close out of your menu and you should throw the device you were holding and get a message saying you can't take that out here. You can pick the device you threw back up and if you look into your inventory, you'll see that you now have 10 of the device you wanted to duplicate. This is best utilized for getting more large batteries either without having to buy them or before you've maxed out your energy wells. Moving on, we have Midair Throw Duplication, or MTD for short. This glitch can be used to duplicate any throwable item when you only have one of it. For this, you'll only need the item you want to dupe. Like I said, this requires that you only have one of the item you're trying to duplicate. For location, you'll need the same type of ledge that we used for ZISD, so any ledge that's high enough for Link to have to step up onto. My recommendation, and how I'll be doing it in this video, is to build a small ramp like this. Then we want to get up on our ledge, hold down R, and take out the item we want to duplicate, so we're holding it out to throw. Next, we're going to walk off the ledge, and once you go airborne, you want to hold up on the D-pad. Once the item menu is open, let go of R. Now, select the item you're holding. This should show up with a quantity of zero in the menu. Press X to drop the item, and the menu will close. If you don't have the option to drop, that means you pressed up on the D-pad either too late or too early. 
When the menu closes, you'll throw the item in your hand, but one will also drop on the ground, duplicating it. If you get a message saying you can't take that out here, it means the ledge is blocking the space where the item would be dropping. This usually happens for larger items. To fix it, just walk off the ledge sideways instead of forward. To do this with items that have thrown effects, like gems, all you need to do is pull up recall after you throw them, select the thrown item with it, and immediately cancel recall. This will cause the item to fall to the ground without setting off the effect. This glitch can also be used to duplicate Zonai devices and is the most efficient way of duplicating them. To use MTD with Zonai devices, you need to place your ramp in front of a wall so they can't be deployed. This forces the game to put it back in your inventory and since we're throwing it at the same time, it duplicates the device. The next one is called Dispenser Storage. This is a neat utility glitch that lets us expand the capability of throw and drop base duplications, like minus duping and MTD. To do this, you'll need two fans. A stabilizer will work too, but it gives you a time limit. Whatever item it is that you want to duplicate, and any requirements for the method of item duping you'll be pairing this with. So if you're using this with minus duping, you'll need everything to do minus duping. And same thing goes if you use this with MTD. As for location, that will vary depending on which item duplication you want to pair it with. For minus duping, you need a dispenser that you can reach with a horse. The dispenser near Terrytown is a good example of this. For MTD, you can go to any dispenser in the game. For this video, I'll be demonstrating dispenser storage with MTD, and using this dispenser here, because it already has building materials there and it has the fans we'll need. If you pair this with MTD, I recommend either using a dispenser that has building materials nearby, like this one, or saving a ramp to your auto build first. So once you get to your dispenser, you want to take out your two fans and fuse them together at a 45 degree angle. Then we're going to place those fans just to the side of the hatch. Now we want to hold an item, any item will do, and we're going to put it in the dispenser. It'll spit the item back out, but the hatch will stay open because the fans on the side are tricking it into thinking that there's an item blocking the way still. Now you can set up your item duplication. So for MTD, we'll just get our ramp set up. From here, you want to grab your fans and make sure they're rotated in this position, then stick them into the opening. Once it's in there, you want to rotate it towards you one time with R and D-pad down, and that'll wedge it in there. Now you can set up our ramp and start duping our items. I recommend duping until you have about 15 to 18 on the ground. If you dupe over 21, you can cause your fans to despawn, so 15 to 18 just gives you a good safety buffer. Once you have your pile of items, pick up all but one of them and put them in the dispenser. Now pick up the one you left behind and use that to start duping again. Once you have your pile built back up, just deposit all but one in the dispenser again and repeat the process until you have however many you want. When you're finished duping, stand to the side of the dispenser hatch and pull up recall. If you hover over the fans, it'll show you which direction they're going to go when you use it, so make sure you set up on the opposite side. As soon as you start recalling the fans, get right up next to them and get ready to start mashing A. The second the dispenser is no longer clogged, all the items you deposited are going to start spilling out one by one. So you need to mash A and pick them up fast enough to avoid 21 or more of them collecting at the same time. Otherwise, they'll start despawning. If you have a turbo controller, this won't be a concern for you. 
there is no limit to this, and given enough patience and effort, you could duplicate up to 999 of an item this way. This method is the most efficient way to duplicate items. Let's move on to weapon duplication with like like fuse entanglement. There are a few different ways to duplicate weapons with this glitch, but I'm going to be focusing on the easier ones for this video. For this, we're going to need different things depending on what you want to duplicate. For melee weapons, you'll need the weapon you want to dupe, this is our target weapon, a weapon to sacrifice, this is our donor weapon, and a spare shield. For shields, you'll need your target shield, a donor shield, and a spare melee weapon. For bows, you'll need your target bow, a donor bow, and two spare shields. None of the spare shields or the spare weapon can have anything fused to them already, so if there's something on them, you need to break it off first. You'll also need a few of any elemental fruit and at least one low damage bow, regardless of what type of item you're duplicating with this. If you don't have a low damage bow, you can get a four damage wooden bow in the Gutenbox Shrine. For location, that's exactly where we're going. So once you get there, jump straight off the ledge in front of you, down to this cave, and you'll find your like like. This can be done with any like like. This is just the earliest one you encounter, so anyone can follow this regardless of game progress. Unequip all gear and save before you do anything else. Starting with melee duping, you want to equip your donor item and drop or place your spare shield in front of the like like. When it notices your shield, it'll open its mouth and the bulb inside will pulse four times. You want to time those pulses and when the fifth pulse would be, you want to fuse the shield to your melee weapon. After hitting fuse, you want to drop the donor weapon on the ground, then throw an elemental fruit the like like to make it open its mouth and shoot the bulb with an arrow. If your timing on the fuse was correct, you should hear the shield fuse to your weapon after you shoot the like like, and the shield will have moved to the same spot as where you dropped the donor weapon. Now, with no shield or melee weapon equipped, pick up your shield and fuse the donor weapon to it. When you do, the donor weapon will fall right back to the ground. Now you want to pick up the donor weapon and unequip your shield. When you do, you'll see that your donor weapon will also disappear from your hand. From here, you want to open your inventory and drop your target weapon. Pick it back up, and you should now see that Link is holding the target weapon, but if you open the inventory, it still says that you have the donor weapon equipped. This means the weapon is desynced. Now just drop the equipped weapon and pick it back up, and it will resync into the target weapon, duplicating it. For shield duping, you want to equip your donor item and drop or place your spare melee weapon in front of the like like. Just like with melee weapons, we're going to wait until he notices it, then press fuse when that fifth pulse would be. And again, we're going to drop our shield, throw our elemental fruit at it, and shoot the bulb. You should hear the fusion sound, and your spare melee will snap to where the donor shield is. With no shield or melee weapon equipped, we're going to pick up the spare weapon and fuse the donor shield to it. Like before, the shield will fall straight back to the ground when you fuse it to the weapon. Now pick the shield up and unequip your melee weapon. This will cause your shield to disappear as well. So once again, we're going to go into our inventory and drop our target shield, then pick it back up. This will make it look like Link is holding the target shield, but in your inventory will show the donor shield equipped. Now just drop the equipped shield and pick it back up, and it will resync the shield into the target shield, duplicating it. And now for bows. To start, you want to drop your donor bow and equip one of your spare shields. Similar to melee and shields, we're going to place the donor bow in front of the like-like and fuse it to the shield when that fifth pulse would be. 
Once you hit Fuse, you want to drop your equipped shield, then equip another one. Now we're going to do the Elemental Fruit and the Bow, just like before. And same thing, if done right, you'll hear the Fuse, and the Donor Bow will snap to where the dropped shield is. With no other bow equipped, you want to pick up the Donor Bow, then unequip your shield. This will cause the bow to disappear as well. And now, same as both times before, you want to go into your inventory, drop the target bow, and pick it back up. This puts us back in that desynced state where it looks like the target bow, but still shows the donor bow in the menu. So again, we're going to drop the equipped bow and pick it back up, sinking the bow into the target bow, duplicating the item. After duping any type of equipment with this method, you can take your spare items to Pelison, and you can get the donor items back. Our final weapon duplication glitch is slugging. This is another method of weapon duplication that's infinitely more forgiving than the last one. The requirements for this one are a lot more simple and uniform. For either melee weapons, shields, or bows, you'll need your item that's getting duplicated, this is your target item, and an item to sacrifice, this is your donor item. For our location, we'll be going to the Gutenbach Shrine and jumping straight down to the cave like last time. The process for performing this glitch is also more uniform than the last one, meaning the steps will be the exact same for melee weapons, shields, and bows. So first step is to unequip all melee shield and bows and make a save. This is just for safety. So like before, we want to take our donor weapon and drop or place it on the ground next to the like-like. We're going to watch for that same fifth bulb timing, except this time we're going to pick the donor item up. You can get eaten with the item or position link so only the item gets eaten like I'm doing. Both will work equally fine, it's just a matter of preference. When you press A to pick up the donor item, you should see a prompt on the right side of your screen saying that you got the item. If you check your inventory, it should say the item is equipped, but no item will be visibly equipped on Link. If you're using swords, you may see a messed up sheath on your back like I have now. Next, we want to warp anywhere. It doesn't matter where, but for convenience, I suggest just going back to the Gutenbach Shrine. When you load in, any visible remnants of your weapon, such as the sheath or the quiver, will be gone, but you'll still have the item equipped in your inventory. From here, you want to drop your target item, then pick it back up. This will cause it to desync and look like the target item while saying the donor item is equipped in your inventory. Now simply drop the equipped item and pick it back up to resync the item into the target item, duplicating it. This is the most efficient way to duplicate weapons. This is also the only way to duplicate the MSG not found on current patch if you already have one. And that's it. That's every single working duplication from items to devices to weapons in version 1.2.0. Videos like these take a lot of time to make, so consider leaving a like or comment down below, even if it's just to say hi. Those things really help out with the algorithm. If you want to see more videos like this, then consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be streaming daily on Twitch starting around the end of the month, so I'll leave a link down in the description for anyone who might be interested in that. And I'll also have a link to the Discord if you'd like to join the community over there and hang out in between uploads. But that's all from me. I'll see you next time.